the unusual time, so it was nice, right? So, um, was that easy? Last one Monday we talked about how um, working with scalar is going to get the last. Like, there's a question there, like five questions about whether or not to work with positive and negative. Negative or zero. And I was hoping to get the The one that had like A through H, it had like.
the, so what are the energies changing here? Is there any change in potential energy, gravitational potential energy? No, because it is, a, uh, it is on a horizontal flow, right? So it is not changing. So we ha don't have to think about this, right? And there is no spin potential energy as well. So delta U G is known, it is zero. So all the thing is changing K, right? So the delta K is not uh, zero. So what you have is delta K is equal to W. The work done by the force must be equal to the change in kinetic energy of the vehicle or the object here. So the, the work done can now be calculated easily since you know the force, right? And do you know the distance? No, 10 meters, right? Because each box was moved 10 meters, so that's also a constant for the problem now. So only thing changing is what? The force on it, right? The force on it. So force times the distance here, because they are in the same direction, it is positive, right? So force times the distance, and that should be equal to change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is half mv final squared minus half mv initial squared. Actually, we don't have to calculate this one. So what we have question is about delta k. Which one is going to have bigger delta k? Delta k is equal to W because of this theorem, so we can say that. But W is force times the displacement. Since the displacement is the same for each and every one, so at the end, it comes down to the bigger force, right? The one having the biggest force will have the biggest change in kinetic energy. But it does not mean, just remember, it does not mean that object is going to have the highest speed because the speed uh, is not just the kinetic energy, I mean that the kinetic energy is not just the speed, it is the multiple of the V square and M, right? So because of that reason, different, of, different things have different uh, the speeds, and the one having the largest kinetic energy change is going to be the one having the largest force. Which one is the correct one? So the thing that you need to note down, not the answer, basically how you get it done, okay? The answer is not going to help you. The, you need to know how to do it, okay? And now I think you can answer this question quite easily. This is the same question, so but which one? is going to have experience the least change in kinetic energy, okay? So because delta K is equal to W, we have the same situation, but if I ask this question, instead of putting this one on a horizontal flow, if I ask that something like this is moving down, is this going to change? Because, what? Because now there will be a change in potential energy as well, right? So we cannot simply isolate kinetic energy only in this situation, okay? It's a, it's a different situation, okay? Okay, now uh, this is a very good application, so I'll, I'll show you how to do this one. And uh, you can write down while I'm working on the problem. Um, so the question is, uh, friction is present here, and um, and it's moving down, and because of the friction, uh, slate is going to uh, stop somewhere, okay? It's going to uh, be at rest some point, and the question is that how far it is going to be from the bottom of the thing over here, okay? That delta x distance is the unknown, okay? This may look difficult to you, but uh, if you pay attention to it, uh, the, how we use the energy conservation or the um, work energy theorem, uh, thing could be easy, okay? Um, first of all, look at the question and try to identify what is going on, okay? And the first part, starting from zero here, and when the plate comes over here, what do you think? It's going to have, if I assume this is my potential energy zero level, Right? So I'm totally free to assume this level, okay? 
you can assume from where over here to be potential energy zero, uh, then this is going to have potential energy because of that uh, assumption. Otherwise, then you can simply assume that this to be zero, okay? So this to be zero now. So when it comes down over here, the potential energy must be zero because I assign so, right? So uh, when it comes over here, it is going to have some kinetic energy, right? That kinetic energy must exactly be equal to what? Initial potential energy, because there was no any initial kinetic energy, right? So if you think about these two points, if you think about these two points, the beginning and the beginning, the first term, let's say this is A and this is B, so energy at A must be equal to energy at B, right? And there is no any kind of frictional effect, we don't consider air resistance, so it is simply the conversion of potential energy to kinetic energy, okay? You should be able to see this before you begin, okay? So then, when it comes over here, it is just kinetic energy and starts moving along this line, will there be any change in potential energy? No, there is no any change in potential energy, but the kinetic energy begins to change, why? Because of the friction, right? Frictional force, is in the opposite direction to the motion, and as a result of that, what happens is that the uh, the slate is going to lose its kinetic energy, okay? Slate plus this uh, person. So it's going to lose kinetic energy. That kinetic energy will be converted into what? Thermal energy, okay? That kinetic energy will be converted into thermal energy. Since the beginning of the kinetic energy here is exactly equal to the initial potential energy, you can say the initial potential energy is now, now converted into thermal energy here, right? Can you see that argument? So if you had basically 100 joules at, um, at the beginning as the potential energy, when it comes over here, 100 joule remains the same. What will happen <coughs> is that everything has now been converted into kinetic energy. Now you have 100 joules of kinetic energy, okay? Then now this 100 joules of kinetic energy at the end, throughout this motion, will be converted into another 100 joules of thermal energy, okay? So here we had only uh, potential energy, that is UG. And then on the way, so it is UG plus kinetic energy because it is changing. And when it comes over here, it is only kinetic energy. And then on the way down, so what happens is that kinetic energy is converted into work done. So it is negative work done actually. So heat energy, so everything is now delta ETH does change in thermal energy. So that's what basically happens. Now we can apply that to uh, do the problem. Okay? If you see this, what is going on, before you start putting numbers or anything, so then answering the question is easy. That's what you want to have. Okay? So we can write down uh, uh, using energy conservation. using energy conservation. So we can write down, uh, let me say this is my A, and this is my B and C, okay, A, B and C, okay. E at A is equal to E at B, uh, so we can write it down, and then it's equal to the Energy now. So E at B is equal. 
equal to the thermal energy. So when you write down this one, you don't have to write down a negative sign. So I'll show you how to put the negative sign. Negative sign comes with delta E, not just delta K, not just U, G, O, uh, uh, K, okay? So then U, G, A is going to be M, G, this distance, which is y i, plus zero, and the work done is going to be the frictional work done. The frictional work done is going to be the frictional force, F of k, the kinetic friction, multiplied by the displacement delta x. Okay, the frictional work done. Now, I will do the same problem a little bit differently with delta e. Okay? Mgyi plus zero is equal to fk times delta x. And uh, then uh, what we need to figure out is delta x. Delta x is going to be Mgyi divided by fk. So now uh, we have a question. So we need to figure out fk in order to figure out delta x now. But if you look at the free body diagram, when it is moving to the right, so mg is the weight in the downward direction and the normal force in the upward direction, okay? And it has a frictional force, fk, to the left, okay? If we apply sigma f is equal to mass times the acceleration for the x direction, so you would get minus fk is equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Uh, so what is the acceleration in the x direction? Do we know? No. Okay. So you can simply put it as a. And, and the next question, do we really need that? Okay. So then the other one, uh, you know that sigma fy is equal to ma1. So sigma fy is equal to may, so n minus mg is equal to zero. Right? These are not new things to you. Okay? So that gives us n is equal to mg. But what we know is that f of k is equal to mu of k times n, right? Regarding frictional forces, right? So then f of k is simply mu of k multiplied by n is mg. Okay? So now you can substitute that one here. So it's going to be mg yi divided by, instead of f of k, it is mu k mg. Okay? Now the m cancels and you end up with g times yi divided by mu kg. Okay? Sorry, I, I could have canceled this one as well, g as well. yi over mu k. Could that be true? I just asked. Okay, so the M cancels out, G cancels out, right? So it is Y I O mu K, and the mu K is greater than one or less than one? It is less than one, right? So then delta X is going to be greater than Y I, right? So if you calculate that. So if you calculate this one, so delta X is going to be, what, what is Y I? It's 10 meters. It's 10 meters divided by what is mu of K? Is 0.3. So what do you get? Hmm? Thirty-three meters. Okay, it's going to be thirty-three meters. Okay, and you may wonder why did I use this delta E? So if I were to use delta E, so let me show that as well. Okay, I simply use the energy. 
them right, the total energy must remain the same. Okay? So if you think about this one, delta E is now going to be equal to W, but delta E is basically coming from delta K here. Okay? Uh, for the, uh, if you think about the change in uh, energy, so consider V to C, consider V to C, delta E is equal to W, delta E is simply delta K now, delta K is equal to W, right? Delta K is that half MV final squared minus half MV initial squared is equal to uh, W is going to be minus FK times D is going to be delta A. Okay? This is going to be delta A. But V final is going to be zero because it is at the uh, stop. It is zero, so then it's going to be minus half MVI squared is equal to minus FK delta X. The minus minus cancel, so you get half MV final, I'm sorry, MVI squared is equal to FK delta X. Now, you need to figure out MVI squared, but MVI squared directly equal to uh, MGYI. So then it is going to be FK delta X. Okay? So that's what we get at the end as well. Is that clear? So you can follow any method, but still you should end up with the same mark. Any questions about this one? You think well. Oh, no, I think so. All right. Uh, this is spin potential energy, and uh, the spin potential energy comes with uh, a law regarding spin. And I think you did this experiment in the, in the lab, right? Hooke's law. So you're familiar with Hooke's law. I didn't do that in the class, okay? So Hooke's law is this. Uh, it simply says that um, if you have a spring and if you pull the spring and the spring is going to stretch, right? So the spring pulls on this FSP, right? F of SP in that direction, right? So why do I draw that in this? So uh, let's say I pull, I put a mass here. Then if I draw the free body diagram on this one, so FSP in that direction, right? So the weight W is in the downward direction, right? So this is spring force F of SP, so which is basically proportional to the the stretch of the spring delta X, right? Or delta Y, you name it, and um, it is proportional to delta X. And it depends on the type of the um, spring as well. So we denote that as a constant here. F of SP is going to be K times delta X. And try to put delta X always instead of just X because that you might mislead uh, because of that. Delta X is a change in length, okay? So the stretch of the spring. And K is called something, what is K? And it's a spring constant. Right, the value of the spring constant uh, is measured in what? 